Hello boys and girls. So in an effort to get done with this short series introducing Topoi or Toposes, today I discuss the probably third of five videos um, and we are going to define a sub object classifier in a general Topos and then introduce what a Topos is. Um, in the previous videos, I talked about these concepts in the context of the category of sets or in set theory. Uh, also, um, this night I had my thousands subscribers, so thank you um, for subscribing to this channel. Um, I appreciate that there's now a little bit more honest uh, comments. The good thing about my comment section is that if people take the effort to actually write something, they um, they ask questions and uh, it has some, some uh, content. I don't get too many comments, but that's, that's fine. Uh, basically, I do these videos to communicate with uh, the few people who are actually interested in doing something like making, maybe making some uh, even uh, GitHub project or actually uh, proving some stuff. Um, it's not very general. I, I appeal that is uh, clear. Um, but uh, so this is the, the line I'm writing. Uh, it's also I know that my videos are far too long to like actually like have a popular appeal. People want to sit down for 10 minutes or 15 maybe on a YouTube video and not sit for uh, one hour uh, every week. Um, but uh, from an effort perspective, since I just do that after work um, and uh, also like there, I, I don't know if there's any fine line between um, just, you know, doing memes on a blackboard, uh, like some YouTubers, um, discussing funky integrals. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with that. Um, it's, it's one type of content, but then you don't really get any like coherent red thread across or just doing extra lecture series like you do them in, in university. But, uh, like, since, uh, I don't want to spend more than, I don't know, five hours per video or so. And this is roughly the time I take, uh, including preparation and writing these texts. Uh, this is this is what we're going now for the moment. Maybe it will develop, but uh, in any case, uh, thanks for, for the subscriptions. Okay, so now going on um, now with the video. Uh, yeah, so for reference, uh, there was the first video where I talked about basically just uh, like the set theoretical context and explain the old ingredients, not really talking about categories at all. Uh, then in this video uh, two weeks ago, um, we uh, discussed sub objects as conceived in this error theoretical sense that you say um, basically having uh, a sub object amounts to having a bunch of injections or monomorphisms. And then um, I talked a lot about characteristic functions and how they tie to the axiom of specification or axiom of comprehension, right? So, um, in uh, this is the, this file. Of course, it is always in the bottom uh, of this video in the gist, and in particular, this file has become quite long because it, because it extends over these five videos that I'm planning to do on Topoi. Um, so we had to here discussed. Uh, this uh, notion of um, sub-object and how they relate to injections. This is not the beginning of the file, by the way. This is just a recap of the, the, the second video. We talked about characteristic functions, uh, how the characteristic functions relate to predicates defining subsets. And then we talked about uh, this uh, diagram. And let me quickly do a recap because this is what will generalize in the topos theoretical sense. So we, we have here still the, the setting of a set theory. We can think of, of it as the universe of this course, all the sets lying around in, in, in the logical universe. Or you can already think about the category of sets, which is the same sort of thing. It's a class of all sets and arrows in between them. And so here we have the, um, the uh, in particular in this, this classical uh, set theory here that I take as an example, we have the, this set of two elements. Uh, the, the one is modeled as the singleton, but this symbol one stands for the set which just contains the set zero. 
and the set zero itself is the empty set, but this is not important here. Um, this arrow is the constant function mapping from the singleton that holds just the empty set to this um, pair set, which holds two sets, the empty set as well as the set holding the empty set. Um, and then we have any uh, set X and we think of this as the big set and some characteristic functions. So for every element in this set, we say yes or no, you know, we, this characteristic function like characterizes a subset. Um, you can think of that as the natural numbers, for example, and the characteristic function uh, mapping all uneven numbers to zero and all even numbers to one, which means the characteristic function represents the set of all even numbers. And um, then here we have uh, the this this uh, set corresponding to the characteristic function, right? This uh, if this is all the natural numbers, and then this would in this example correspond to all the even numbers. And in in this obvious way, then even numbers inject into the natural numbers, right? So we, here we have a set X. Here we have a subset. Um, it is a subset in that it has an injection um, here. And and of course, there's like the we talked about in the previous videos about um, the uh, a sub object as the equivalence class of these. Um, uh, monomorphisms or injections, right? Because you can uh, permute uh, the image of this injection and it would still be a, a, an injection and correspond to the same subset. And um, we also, like still in this set theoretical classical example, uh, discussed uh, that uh, this uh, diagram commutes, right? Here from any set set to the singleton, there's exactly one, uh, Morphism, namely the, the the function mapping everything to zero, um, and so uh, if the, the error that uh, is uh, goes around this corner is just mapping any element here to one, and if indeed this set z corresponds to this characteristic function, then everything here also goes to to one, right? And in this way, we can use the um, characteristic function on the set X to define the, the set here, yeah, right? We, we, we talked about this here. So if we have uh, X and we have the characteristic function, then this predicate saying characteristic function over lets to one with set theoretical comprehension defines the set set. Okay, let me shortly refresh. Okay. Okay, and then also as a recap, still we are here in the this set theoretical case. Still, um, we talked about this uh, particular set which um, corresponds to a relation which captures all information about membership on the set X. So if uh, this symbol here, uh, you know, member X, let's say, um, is defined. As, as the set of all pairs where the first entry is uh, or let's let's start here where the second entry is um, any subset of X and the first entry um, must be an element of that subset right uh, then uh, this captures information about which elements of X right uh, the elements of Z are necessarily also elements of X which elements of X are in which subset of X, right? So for example, uh, if uh, again, if, if X is the natural numbers, if um, Z is the even numbers, then the pair uh, seven and even numbers, this would not be in, in, this, in this relation because seven is not in the even numbers, right? So if everything here matches together, then this, uh, this pair would be there. So for example, the, the, the uh, if Z is all the natural numbers bigger than 50, then the number 70 would be in the set. So this pair would be in this relation, right? So this is the set which 
which um, captures the information this of of uh, elements and subsets of of X, and uh, this uh, thing is the set itself. Like this relationship is a subset um, of of this uh, set here, right? The, the Cartesian product of the set with the power set of, of X, it's clear that by the definition of this thing, that this is one of the many subsets of this particular set. And so it fulfills actually the same uh, like commutative diagram that we also had here, right? So here we, we said that um, this diagram like relates subsets of X with characteristic functions and uh, this also works out here where the characteristic function is, is given as such. Right? So this is the characteristic function corresponding to this relation uh, takes these two entries and evaluates exactly uh, like that and then this is in the, the sense in which this relation on X is captured um, and corresponds even more so to this characteristic function. So again, here we, we want to go from the from the subset to the characteristic function. This is what we are really doing here. And then I also talked about the fact that now we, uh, with that uh, relation defined, we can speak about uh, membership, truth of membership in an error theoretical sense, namely um, given any error from the singleton here to here the like th this error would be uh, right this uh, the function which maps from zero to whatever uh, and some a in x and some u in in px then a is exactly in u if this pair is also here right because this relation like captures exactly the membership um proof um and so if this error actually factors through uh, this um, through this uh, injection, right? If 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 this whatever a and u you choose, a is in u in this set theory. If this pair also ex exists here, and in error theoretic terms, we can express this as this error factors through these two errors. Like there is some error here and here. Um, Okay, I hope that makes sense. Uh, here's also a comment um, on uh, speaking of a, a characterization of the um, the power class operation itself, but we will not need this in this video. This will be relevant for the next video where I talk about uh, how we capture the notion of uh, taking the power of a set in a topospheretical sense, where we don't actually really need to speak about sets in the proper sense. Okay, so. Yeah, the uh, the joke, of course, is that everything we just discussed, these this diagrams, did not really rely all that much on the fact that this offset uh, set in the bottom right is the set with these two elements. And this is what is generalized now. So um, this thing becomes uh, capital, capital omega. And um, then uh, the, the power set any set will then also be um, replaced with this uh, category theoretical exponentiation, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Okay, so before I define a topos, uh, I define what the sub object classifies. Okay, and here's the definition an error from one to omega. So this is basically this error here, right? Uh, previously, that was the error from the singleton to the two element set. An error in a category with a terminal object. Terminal object is is this here. This one is not a singleton because we are now we left the set theoretical context, right? We we need to give error theoretical characterization of all the things we talk about, and this one here um, is the standard notation for the terminal object, which is the object in the category if it exists that has um, only one error from any object into it. Right. In the same way that a singleton, like from any object, you, there's only one way to map into a singleton, namely collapse everything into the object that the singleton holds. And the terminal object is defined by this property. So one is a terminal object and an error from the terminal object to some other object, omega, um, is 
a sub object classifier so this 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 error this um, simple simple constant error previously is a sub object classifier if for any uh, monomorphism or injection here um, this uh, function this um, error is the projection out of z obtained by taking the pullback along the unique error uh, a unique error so so like in other words um, the uh, an error from one to an error from the terminal object to any object um, omega is a sub is what we call a sub object classifier if it has the following property whatever other object you take x um, with an error uh, sorry whatever other object you take and any monomorphism into that object uh, there is a unique error this is equivalent to the characteristic function such that this basically such that the triangle commutes and by the triangle commutes I actually mean that this triangle is actually a pullback meaning um, I'm not sure if in the last video I discussed pullbacks maybe not explicitly but but basically the pullback amounts to the similar thing um, in the uh, set theoretical case that uh, the uh, comprehension axiom did for us it it uh, like it just comprehend like it takes uh, everything it can get it is the fullest object that makes this uh, triangle commute right so in in maybe more um, simpler terms the the sub object classifier is what lets us um, translate uh, talking about uh, monomorphisms or injections or sub-objects it, it, it takes this concept and uh, gives us a relation that expresses the this this notion in terms of uh, unique errors into this uh, this object so um, in uh, in that sense it translates the notion of sub-object given by monomorphism that already exists like you can al already like talk about this error theoretically like define what a monomorphism is and say this is my generalized notion of sub-object and a sub-object classifier uh, now relates this to errors into a special object uh, in the same way that characteristic functions relate to sub-objects in a set theory case although this omega here does not have to be uh, like any particular set or anything it doesn't have to be in particular it doesn't have to be the set holding 0 1 this uh, set of binary truth values uh, it's just another uh, pretty generic error it, the, the, the condition that we define here is this abstraction that relates injections to maps into a special object previously this is basically it internalizing predicates in uh, as errors in this um, in this category okay so um, here I, I wrote down some sentence uh, morally I know this is mathematicians speak morally this uh, this object it, it, it functions sort of like a, a set of truth values it, it functions very much uh, uh, like like so in the sense that the, the errors from from uh, from the terminal object into it are like in correspondence with truth values in in a, in a in a sense. Um, so here in the set theoretical case, we had for example there was this of course this constant function that maps uh, the the singleton from the singleton um, into this uh, binary object by mapping the zero here to the one here. This is the sub object classifier in this classical category of sets. There would also be the, the set mapping the zero to zero. So there are two arrows from the terminal object to the, this, this uh, two element object. And these two arrows from there to there correspond to two truth values in this classical situation. And similarly, here we also have uh, various errors a priori. We have a priori various errors from the terminal object into this object. The particular one uh, that has this um, commuting triangle property is going to be the sub-object classifier 
But nevertheless, these objects here, this these arrows from sorry, these arrows from the terminal object to uh, omega, they actually form this um, heading algebra. Uh, then this is a, they, they are also like function like truth values, which was also a motivation why I did this video um, about um, uh, heading algebras a few days ago. Okay, so this is the like an abstract definition, and uh, now we're going to go on and uh, replicating some of the constructions that were, were straightforward with um, the set theoretical operations. Okay, so um, now we define a topos. The topos is going to be the category that has this set sub object classifier um, error, right? Um, it has this this magical object omega and, and a terminal object mapping into it. Um, that makes this pullback uh, commute, and we also want some other things that we, we maybe know from the category of sets, uh, like very few, uh, more or less easy to state um, st things, and that is then just a topos. Okay, so here, uh, an elementary topos is a Cartesian cl uh, close category, uh, which, uh, like, I mean, go to the Endler page or maybe Wikipedia to look up exactly what the definitions are. But essentially, you can do currying there. You can you can speak about um, uh, like taking the power of an object with respect to another, like creating f what in within the category of sets would be would amount to a, a function space set. Um, so. An elementary topos is a Cartesian closed category uh, that has a sub object classifier. Let me fix this typo here. Um, and and it has pullbacks, so it has uh, also other like for every ob um, object there. All these, these the pullbacks, the pullbacks are the um, special cases would be, for example, uh, the Cartesian product and so on and so forth. So these are two uh, essentially algebraic, uh, like in a sense, category theories and algebraic theory. So this is like kind of tautological, but these are like some some niceness conditions uh, for a category. And we also want a sub object classifier of um, to um, you know, reason about uh, injections or monomorphisms, I should rather say. And this is then already a topos. It's a, just a very particularly nice category. It's nice in the sense that it has this this uh, uh, very special object, this, this very special uh, commuting square um, and pullback. Yeah, and uh, then, um, as is often uh, people like to emphasize, once you have these sort of um, uh, properties, then uh, these categories automatically have an, a bunch of other nice properties. So um, here you have, I, ma I make various notes. So that it has uh, finite uh, limits and co-limits, and it's locally Cartesian closed. You can look up exactly what uh, the this uh, category theoretical properties mean if you don't know them. But there are let's say niceness conditions. Okay, um, and. Yeah, okay, this is was my like this is already my informal motivation, right? Now we have this sort of um, characteristic functions of sort of predicate realizations. Um, and so let's let's go on and uh, point out that given the sub object classifier, this 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 error from one into omega, um, we can also then cook up something which in the category of sets reduces to this sub, uh, subset relation, right? So, okay, we are in a category that means on every object there is an identity morphism. This object is Cartesian closed. So if uh, we have any x, so any other object, we have omega to the power uh, to the power of x, like omega to the x. We have the identity morphism on this object, um, and then we can do uh, uncurring, right? We can we can um, Put like uh, I mean this is just curring. You take the x and uh, have this adjunction or bijection. So you have this. Uh, you can define this object into omega, and that then uh, is a characteristic function that we are going to call he uh, element x x. So you see the type is exactly um, what we had. 
what we had here. Right here, here we had x cross power set of x, and this is what amounts to to this, right? So in, in uh, let's say Zermelo Frankel theory, uh, the maps of a set x into the two element set um, is in projection with the power set of x. So this is the same exact type. But now we have a function um, uh, that maps into, um, into omega and we promised ourselves that the topos has all uh, the pullbacks. So now we can actually pull back the, uh, sorry, we can pull back uh, the sub object classifier error along this um, characteristic error and we opt we get an, an, uh, a new object so this would in the standard notation be then written like that you know the pullback you write with x cross and the object where you that, that everything points to and uh, this object in the set theoretical sense would then exactly be the object encoding all the element relation right and in this sense you have for any object x the this element of relation encoded in this error theoretical sense even though we have not actually spoken about errors at all we, uh, about mem uh, member like sets on members at all we have just spoken about objects generic objects and errors between them and demanded some conditions and then we can define something this uh, um, membership object uh, tied to x um, that in the case of the category of sets is actually this relationship encoding membership. Um, okay, uh, so this is only half of the, the article, but I, I will close it with this final remark. Um, so uh, this is, situation here is, is nevertheless different than in uh, set theory written down in logic, because there we have the, the you know, first order logic with this um, membership uh, predicate ranging over the whole universe of this course but here this this uh, this um, membership relation objects or previously uh, this membership relation sets right these merely encode membership relation on x so this is a sort of a little bit more local this is membership with respect to a particular superset the superset can be very big um, but um, unless this superset is the, is the set of all sets, um, which, um, as we have seen in the video uh, yesterday, uh, is not compatible with the axiom of comprehension, even predicative com comprehension in, in uh, intuitionistic logic. So uh, the membership predicate is always like, uh, you might say a typed one. It's always with respect to a particular superset X that you chose. It's never the uh, the global membership predicate. So there is no, if V denotes the the universe of all sets, it's not it's not the membership like it's not the the membership relation on V times power set of V. This is here in quotes because uh, why do I have here two quotes? Okay, so this is this is just a note, right? In the category theoretical sense, if you may write down category theory in the first order language, then you would axiomize this tertiary uh, relationship concatenation and not membership predicate. And this is a little bit different upfront because you don't have um, this global true-false uh, relation of two elements anyway so it's there's there's uh, some distinction anyhow and the topos theoretical set theory world is a little bit different and it also that uh, uh, set like there are some some axioms in in classical like set theory as classically conceived in logic are a little bit hard to translate and also to category theoretical uh, world or they are not as needed like for example the the strong axiom of replacement um is a little bit more awkward to realize um, than what we do here. But in, in any case, this is actually a physics YouTube channel. So I don't uh, need the strongest axioms. I just need, uh, I just want in any case, like some formal math and it can be quite weak. And uh, so I don't need to care about, I, I don't have size issues, you know. Um, 
Okay, so uh, I will leave it at that. Um, I will uh, continue work talking about power objects where the power operation uh, can then also be introduced um, in a way that uh, you can sort of guess. We'll talk a little bit more about initial objects and then one interesting aspect of uh, Topos theory is then it, that it's you know not just the theory about sets, whatever it means, um, but also one of logic. I say that in, in square crawls because these two concepts, like these subjects of study, they are so closely related that um, it's probably not a good idea to split them up uh, in any case. And uh, I will talk a little bit about the internal logic, as you can see, I have some notes here. And then finally, there are some uh, notes on examples of Topoi that are not just the category of sets straight on. Um, you know, I, I talked about an elementary topos that I was defined. There's also the technically more restricted version of a Grotentik topos, uh, which is more related to um, practical math, like algebraic geometry, um, less, less logic related, if you will. But okay, uh, we will get to that. So again, um, thanks for uh, subscribing. Um, uh, give me a like, give me, leave me a comment. If you have any questions, if you want to stir my content in a little bit of an, a direction, there's some wiggle room, let me know and uh, have a good night.